My name is Nyasa Williams, and you're watching Gov Historian TV. Welcome to Gov Historian TV, where today I'll be interviewing our special guests, President Richard Nixon and President Jimmy Carter, about a few major acts of the years 1973, 1974, and 1978. Why, thank you, Ms. Williams. It is an honor to be here on your show today. So, President Nixon, first I would love to discuss the Endangered Species Act of 1973. I've heard so many great things about it protecting the wild and aquatic life of America. Can you tell us, what were the historical circumstances that brought it about? Well, the United States Congress created the Endangered Species Act of 1973 in order to replace the earlier acts put in place in 1966. The 1966 acts had proven to be insufficient in the protection of at-risk wildlife and the new acts protected not only wildlife, but their ecosystems as well. Ah, I see. Now what were some of the major provisions of the act that made it more effective than its predecessor? The 1973 version of the act not only required federal agencies to use their authorities to conserve listed endangered species, it also made plants and all invertebrates eligible for protection and ultimately, defined endangered and threatened. Do you feel as if the Endangered Species Act has since been beneficial to the United States? Absolutely. Today. 90% of species are successfully recovering at remarkable rates, specified by their federal recovery plans. That's wonderful. Now moving on, I've heard a bit about the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act of 1974, also known as FERPA. Could you tell us a bit about what led to its creation? Of course. The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act were created in order to protect the privacy of student education records. Its provisions gave parents the right to review student education records, the right to request accurate records when they seem to be misleading or inaccurate, and gave all permission to the parent for their child's information to be released by the school to anyone. FERPA only applies to schools that are federally funded by the U.S. Department of Education. Today FERPA is still very effective and is taken very seriously on a federal level. Thank you, President Nixon. It was a pleasure having you here today. We'll be right back with President Jimmy Carter after these short messages. Every moment wasted, looking back, keeps us from moving forward. Make the right choice. On November 8th, vote me. Vote Hillary. Come on down to eat at George's Diner. We're open every day 11 to 11 and are currently hiring. Located at 123 North Capitol Street, call us at 555-5567. We deliver. Hi, I'm Carla Green and you can watch my show, The Carla Green Cooking Through Time Show, every weekday at 3 p.m. Central, here on the one and only, Gov Historian TV. Welcome back. I am now here with President Jimmy Carter, who I will be discussing the Civil Service Reform of 1978 with. Once again, thank you so much, Mr. Carter, for being on the show. My pleasure. Thank you for having me, Miss Williams. So, President Carter, what was it that brought about the 1978 version of the Act? The civil service reform passed in 1978 was somewhat a result of the 1977 Watergate scandal in which members of the Nixon administration were discovered performing illegal activities such as spying on people whom Nixon was running against or felt were suspicious. You know he's been gone for a while now. You don't have to act all weird about it. Thank goodness. I was a little worried about that. <laughs> anyway. It completely did away with the United States Civil Service Commission due to its lack of ability to protect employees' rights, 
and distributed its functions amongst three new groups including the Office of Personnel Management, the Merit Systems Protection Board and the Federal Labor Relations Authority. At the time there were at least 30 different pay systems and over 900 federal civil service occupations. It also continued to follow the system already put in place by the Pendleton Civil Service Reform of 1883, in which governmental service individuals are employed based on professional merit as proven by civil service examinations. The Act overall governs federal employee labor relations. Can you tell us what some of its provisions were? Some of the key provisions included prohibition of hiring family members, also known as nepotism. Also, establishment of removing employees who perform unsatisfactorily, and that all employees and applicants should receive fair and equitable treatment. Do you feel as if the act was successful? In some aspects. The Civil Service Reform Act was highly anticipated at its time of establishment and is viewed as one of the most triumphant domestic policies that I have passed. Although some feel as if it strips them of their rights and today people still do not have a great deal of trust in our government like how they did before the scandal, it created much fairer practices and opened opportunities for greater productivity and merit pay. That's great to know. Well folks, that's all the time we have today. Thanks for watching and tune in next week for another segment of GovHistorian TV. Good night everyone.